In today's video, we're looking at the single easiest way to scalp in today's market, understanding where the momentum comes from, and how to find those breakouts. What's up team, it's John from Beginner Trading, and like I said in the intro, in today's video we're looking at ranges with scalping and how you can identify high percentage scalping plays. You know, scalping revolves around ranges in one way or another, and understanding that can really benefit your scalping trades overall. And so if you appreciate free content like this, make sure you click the like button, hit the subscribe button below, and if you click the bell next to that, you'll get an alert every time we drop a new video or go live on stream. With all of that being said, let's take a look at the strategies. In today's video, we're specifically looking at ranges and how they relate to scalping. One of the first things a new trader should understand is how stocks move in ranges and how you can potentially profit from that momentum of those ranges. Whether you're talking about high of the day breaks or low of the day breaks or opening range breakouts, you're talking about range breakouts in general most of the time when you're talking about scalping. Sure, there's some in the range plays that you can take advantage of scalps when they're already in the range, but most scalping typically revolves around range breakouts, and so you do want to understand that moving forward. And with all of this said, ranges have to do with confirmations of a specific level. If you look at AMD today, for instance, you can see it's actually moving in a really obvious range in between that 53.25 low of the day level, and you can see it confirmed off of that level multiple times, and then the top of the range, it looks like is lying right around the VWAP level. Understanding this range can give you a pretty good indication of where a potential breakout might happen, in this case, if it breaks underneath that confirmed low at 53.25, and understanding where those breakouts happen gives you the keys to understanding where momentum comes from with stocks. With all of that said though, one of my favorite ways to approach range breakout scalps is waiting for a few candles to form at the open and then looking for the range of those few candles to break. This is ultimately where you get strategies like the opening range breakout or the one minute range breakout. And again, you can hear that all of them revolve around range breaks in general. And so looking for these type of range breaks is the single easiest way for new traders to pick up scalping in general and getting into the habit of documenting the highs and lows of specific ranges, whether it be daily ranges or five minute ranges or 10 minute ranges, so forth and so on. But understanding these ranges and that momentum comes from these range breaks can be an incredibly profitable thing for a new and experienced trader to pick up and begin to understand with regards to their own trading. One of the most important things in understanding ranges with scalping is understanding confirmation. You know, you look to see how many times a stock has confirmed a specific level. If it touches that level over and over again, we can look for that level to break out and ultimately look for momentum there. The more times it confirms a specific level, the more eyes that are ultimately watching for that level to break. And that's why confirmation is so valuable. Here's another really nice example using WKHS's chart from today. You can look at the 1512 level or 1515 level and see that there was multiple confirmations leading up to around 950 market time. Once we finally got the break under that confirmed level, not only did it break underneath it, but it held that previous level as resistance and ultimately you could see the volume came in, giving you a really nice breakdown. To give you a long example, we can look at WKHS from a few days ago on July 2nd. Again, you can see a really nice confirmed level on the upside that it was respected and confirmed multiple times. And then again, when it finally breaks that level, you can see the volume come in and not only does it break the level, but it actually holds that level as support. This is how you avoid getting faked out with scalps, find better momentum breakout plays, and ultimately have a higher percentage time scalping and trading these breakouts and breakdowns. Now to actually reinforce the point, today as I was filming this, I actually got into a really nice range breakout trade on AMD, reinforcing the exact points I made with these last two examples, but in this case I was actually able to live narrate during this trade so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at this trade. All right, so as I said, here's the actual range break. You can see the 53.18 range actually broke on the downside. And so again, like I said, I'm going to short this one with 1,000 shares, and we're going to look for a 53.10 profit target with this 1,000 shares. 
we're using that as a profit target because that's actually the low of this kind of opening pre-market range here. You can see it's the bottom of that candle right there in pre-market. And so I think that's a pretty solid, quick reward target for us to try to scalp a few cents off the bottom here. Another great thing about these type of trades is that once they actually break underneath these levels, many times they're gonna hold as resistance. And so you can see it broke under that previous low right here at around 53.18. And now we're gonna look for that level to ultimately hold as resistance. Again, you can see that previous level that confirmed multiple times now finally holding as resistance once we broke under it. Again, I'm holding a thousand shares and this is completely live so I'm not narrating over this. And again, we're just looking for that previous support level to turn into resistance and we're looking for it to push it down after that range break that everybody else sees here. Again, there's the breakout I called out. One thing you'll notice is that the bottom of the range actually held as resistance. And again, I'm doing this all completely live. I'm not narrating over this, but again, you can see the bottom of the range here with AMD that I've been talking about all day actually held it down this time when it finally broke. And that is the value in understanding range breaks with scalping. And there's the $10 price target. Remember, I called out 53.10. That's exactly where I exited. And that is why you look for confirmation and range breakouts. I've actually done a PowerPoint presentation on ranges and breakouts. And so with all of that said, let's take a look at that PowerPoint now. And so here's another example. Um, this is a washout long, you know, whatever you want to call it. You can call it a red to green move. Same exact thing here. It's just breaking out of the range. You can even see a little bit of confirmation in this in pre-market. It had some resistance there. The low down here, you can see the very obvious range right here. Uh, if you look, if you look right here, you can see some confirmation in pre-market even of uh, the high of that range. And so when you finally get this break here, you know, when you finally get this pullback, it kind of stays within the range. When you finally see the break of the range, it gets a nice volume spike and really pushes up in a pretty significant way. And so that's just one example of, you know, how most strategies are taking advantage of these ranges. A rule of thumb with these is that the longer a stock has stayed in a certain range, the stronger that support and resistance will be around those highs and lows. Consequently, when a stock does actually break those levels and holds, and this is an important thing, when I say holds, I mean it uses the previous high and lows as support or resistance. So if it's previous support, it turns into resistance, and if it's previous resistance, it turns into support if it's breaking the highs. The longer a stock stays in a certain range, the more it's gonna confirm those highs and lows. That's gonna mean a few different things. That, that's gonna mean that a lot of the times you can fairly safely base your trade off of those highs and lows. And when it does actually break those levels, the moves can be much more drastic and identifiable. So you'll be able to see them easier because they've stayed in that range. And again, I guess the thing, the point I'm trying to get across is that the longer it stays in a range, the more obvious and self-evident that range is. And so when it finally breaks that range, other traders are going to react and that's going to give it a lot of momentum to go in your direction. All right, so now that we went over that, the next thing you want to think about is that these ranges are a lot of the times where you're going to be basing your risk and reward off of. You know, guys, what do we usually think when we're looking? What do we what do we look for when we're establishing a risk and reward level in a trade? Does anybody know? Previous levels of support and resistance or confirmation. You know, we usually want to see confirmation in where we set our risk level and where we set our reward target. And so with ranges in mind, the range is going to show you where that confirmation is. You're going to be able to see those significant levels from different range breaks and bounces and stuff like that. And so a lot of the times you're looking for confirmation and thus is why understanding the range of a certain stock can help you uh, understand and calculate risk and reward. So like this says, range should be taken into consideration when calculating risk and reward. With both of these, the question you should ask yourself is, where is my most likely reversal point for this stock? Where is the most obvious place that this stock is going to reverse. You know, that's not only where you should set your reward target, but it's also where you should set your risk to a certain extent. 
you know that's the whole point of establishing a risk and a reward area and looking for confirmation in those levels because you're ultimately looking for the most obvious place that that stock may reverse in the opposing direction for risk you want to look for the most obvious place that stock is going to get rejected and come back down if you're going short or go back up if you're going long so if it actually breaks that level you can safely and understandably get out of the trade because at that point it didn't reverse when you wanted it to and so it's your time to exit the trade and same thing with your reward target where is the most if you're going short where is the most obvious place this stock is going to bounce if you're going long where's the most obvious place this stock is going to get rejected at and that way you can take your profits at those levels and understand that that's the most likely place it's going to bounce if you're short if it's going to bounce at this level and you can take some profits just in case it does actually do that and re reverse to head back up anyways guys that's it for this one i hope you understand the different nuances of scalping it can be extremely tough but if you approach it with a range breakout momentum mindset then it can be a lot easier to not get faked out and have higher percentage scalps overall Remember, if you want to watch us day trade using these scalping strategies, we do it live for free on YouTube every single weekday. And so be sure to hit the like button to help support us. Click the subscribe button and bell if you want to get that alert. And good luck in the markets.